Hello everyone, my name is Griffin and we are back with another reaction video. We are reacting to another one of Nuke's top 5 videos. This one's called Top 10 Scary Ghost Videos. Y'all gonna be scared. So, uh, let's check this one out, shall we? Uh, I always love the paranormal. Artist Susie Solmori says that her family lives in a very haunted house in England. The house, which was built in 1902, still contains strange items left by its former owners. But weirdest of all, on the third floor, there is a very strange That's painting nice that was left house. there by a previous tenant. Susie says that this painting is the most haunted object in the entire house. <clears throat> she says that often her young niece carries on long, eerie conversations with the spirit, quote, Gilbert, who she says inhabits the painting. See, here, here's the thing. You, you, um... If you find like an object you believe is haunted and that's probably the cause of all the things that is going on in your place, the thing you should normally do is get rid of it as soon as possible. Don't give it time to anchor itself into your home or to any of you. I'd say just get rid of it. Don't destroy it. Because sometimes that makes things worse. But take it somewhere and just get rid of it. That's that's the best you can do. But if you get rid of the thing that is the object you believe is haunted. And the hauntings are still happening. Then it's most likely not the object itself. It is the home itself that you are living in that is probably haunted. And that it is probably anchored to. <laughs> Well, what? Why well, I heard? I heard that. I heard that. I'm not stupid. I'm very smart. I'm the smartest kid in class. Okay, not really. <laughs> I'm the smartest kid in class. Okay, not really. <laughs> She's humbled herself. Now, normally when kids, uh, I'll, it, it's pretty normal for kids to create imaginary friends. But there, there are times where these imaginary friends are not really imaginary friends. They could probably be a spirit or some sort of entity that we just can't perceive. Most of the times, I believe it's just an, a regular imaginary friend. But I believe there are times where it's an actual spirit or some sort of entity that they're actually talking to that could possibly be dangerous. Um, do you want this or... Do I keep it? Are you okay? Well, I'm tired. I don't know. Hmm. It could get cold. You can't touch cold stuff. But, 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 I'm, but, but I'm warm. One day, Susie and her brother ask her niece about the spirit, Gilbert. Did you like him? Yeah, Gilbert's like one of my best friends. Man. Where did he come from? I don't know. I, I think the man that, that used to live here painted it. Is, it. is Gilbert friendly? Does he speak to you? Yeah. What does he say? Because they don't pray. And this is the point when things take an even creepier turn. Because Susie does some investigating and manages to find an old picture and some info about her family home. What she discovers is downright creepy. Here is a photo of the house from 1916 and it was built in 1902. So this would be the first or one of the first families to live in this house. As you can see, there are six people present in the photo. I'm looking at the English census records. I found that the father would be called John. The mother was called Maud. Next to her on the balcony is her daughter, Dorothy. The birth of a little boy called Gilbert was also registered here in 1911. So he would be about five or six in this photo. I'm unsure why he's not with the rest of his family in the photo. What they did to him. I just have an overwhelming feeling that something really terrible happened to him at the hands of his own family. The weirdest part is that this is where the sun painting is situated in the house. That's his room. Things around the house start to get even weirder as one day when Susie is home alone, she starts to hear banging noises coming from upstairs. 
She grabs her phone and films as she goes to investigate. There is banging coming from inside the playroom where Gilbert's painting hangs. But when she looks inside, there's nothing there. Cut to another night, and as Susie goes upstairs, she again sees her niece doing something a little strange in the third floor playroom. The girl is prying away at the floorboards while singing you are my sunshine. And remember that the spirit Gilbert is said to inhabit an old painting of the sun. Odd coincidence? Maybe. But after the girl has gone to bed, Susie and her brother go back upstairs to investigate the area of the floor that her niece was picking at. What they find makes their blood run cold. I'm gonna try and switch to my wireless headphones because it. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yep. See, <laughs> that this is one thing that uh, I, I've told people this, and I've said it on, on streams and on other videos too. If I ever have my own place, there is one thing I will never, ever allow in any place I live at, and that's an Ouija board. I will never allow an Ouija board in any place I reside. Underneath the floor, there is an old Ouija board with a picture of the sun that looks very similar to the haunted Gilbert painting. So is there a spirit named Gilbert haunting the third floor playroom of Susie's old house? More than and likely. is this spirit sending messages through Susie's young niece? Let me know what you think. We need scary videos. So if you see anything that you think would be perfect for the top five, send it to us at nukestop5 at gmail.com. Up on the housetop. An urban explorer checks out a group of small abandoned buildings in the middle of nowhere, deep in the woods of Poland. Eventually, it gets too dark to explore, and he decides to leave. But hanging around till after dark seems to have been a terrible mistake. I will say this in every video I make of a reaction video I make for Nukes Top 5. If you are ever going to go ghost hunting or exploring like this in abandoned buildings, be it a, a psych ward, hospital, house, or in the woods, I highly implore you, bring one or more people with you. Because the one thing that a lot of people don't understand, especially when it comes to abandoned buildings, is that there might be squatters there or people there that are literally insane and out of their minds and they will attack you on site. And that's why it's always good to have at least one or more people with you because you have safety in numbers. And the other thing is if you find objects that are, um, I'm going to take one out because it's, it's weird hearing that voice with both of them in. 
it's um if you find objects in these places in the woods like a bell that's hung up or an axe or anything in buildings or in forest set like in a forest if you find a bell don't touch it especially if it's hung up and everything don't touch it don't go near it don't do anything with it if you find objects that are near like uh, ritualistic sites circles you know stuff like that that have an occult feel to it don't touch them don't pick them up don't bring them with you don't do anything with them despite whether you believe in this shit or not it is never a good idea to bring it with you because more often than not that people have done just that they have had bad things happen to them so yeah that's my advice Oh yeah, I'd run. Again, this is a reason why you bring somebody with you. Someone can be seen chasing the now panicking urban explorer. And whoever it is, seems to have come from right off the goddamn roof. The urban explorer runs off into the woods to escape. But whoever this strange person is, now seems to be following him. You, you keep giving away your position with the goddamn flashlight. This is the dumbest thing you can fucking do. Another thing you can do uh, is, you know, like with these sort of things, bring a gun or a weapon to defend yourself. Thankfully, the urban explorer makes it home safe and shares his footage on YouTube. A curious viewer points out just how pale the unknown stranger seems to be. Another viewer claims that they too have visited the abandoned buildings and that they also saw this same creepy man. Either way, this strange guy swooping down from the roof to chase the urban explorer away is truly creepy, and it seems like something right out of a horror movie. Ibby and the Kitty TikTok user Ibby is recording a cute video for cats late one night when something happens that she still just can't explain. Oh, he's got the laser beam eyes. Whoa. One of Ibby's cats goes behind the curtains, then turns around and seems to disappear right into the floor. Now, I'm not even entirely sure what's going on here myself, because even when this footage is brightened, it's hard to find any explanation as to why that cat just disappeared. Unfortunately, Ibby didn't share much about the strange video, but all of her cats seem to be safe and accounted for. So just what That's odd. is this? I'll leave it up to you. It's cold outside, but you can keep warm in some all-new Nuke Stop 5 merch. Now, of course, we have t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs, but we also have blankets, pillows, and long sleeves. We've even got stockings and wrapping paper. Hmm. Huh. Anyway, shipping is free, and be sure to order by <laughs> December 8th to get delivery before Christmas. Go to nukestop5.com to shop now. Or, you know, like, whenever you feel like it. Maybe after the video. The Ghost at Granny's Italian YouTube user Simone Bote says that his grandmother has been experiencing strange, unexplainable events in her home. She says that her TV turns on by itself, windows open on their own, and creepiest of all, 
she often hears unexplained voices from somewhere in her house. Even though he's a bit skeptical of his grandmother's claims, Simone agrees to spend the night at her house while she's away. He's not really expecting to experience much of anything, but then he also begins to hear creepy sounds from somewhere in the house. What happens next is truly bizarre. Allora, sono a casa di mia nonna. Allora, non so se sentite, praticamente sono a casa di mia nonna da solo. E e non so se sentite ci sono un sacco di rumori che vengono da di sopra qui e lì allora vabbè il buio pesto no vabbè la luce non va aspetta devo mettere Simone discovers that for some reason the lights upstairs don't seem to be working. So he grabs a flashlight and slowly climbs the stairs in search of the creepy sounds. La parte che c'è un gran rumore di vento e mi sto cagando in mano solo per quello. E quindi Adesso sembra che sia già cioè, smesso tutto quanto. You know what? I'm gonna go back to. No, my bad. No, my bad. Simone is completely alone in the house, but he hears a window and closet door open by themselves. Simone slowly begins to realize that everything that his grandmother has been complaining about is now happening right in front of him. No, va bene, ragazzi, io sono terrorizzato, ma proprio nel Oh, the chandelier is moving. There's no reason for it to be moving either. Direi che vado via perché nei film consiglio sempre questa cosa qua. Quindi non sono, non sono più stupido. Non, ti giuro non riesco, vi giuro non riesco neanche a parlare oggi perché parti. No, vabbè, aspetta, aspetta, aspetta. Oh no, vabbè, il letto è fatto. <coughs> Uh, okay. Let... Gli sportelli sono aperti. It's like somebody tried to make il the letto. bed. Cioè prima il letto non era così. Era... Non ho la voce, ve lo giuro. Non ho la voce. Yeah, it's like somebody tried to make the bed. Okay. Ora vado. Mi sembra il caso di proseguire con questa cosa, non so come. Ok, il vaso non era lì. Il vaso non era lì. Ok. Questo vaso non era lì. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. A chandelier swings back and forth on its own. And just as Simone is about to leave, he hears movement coming from his grandmother's bedroom. He goes to take a look inside and discovers that the bed covers are now neatly arranged, as if someone came in and made the bed. Also, the doors of all the cabinets are open, 
Suddenly, the doors move again and Simone decides to just get out of there. But inexplicably, a vase is now moved to the top of the stairs. This was in my Oh, it was on the second to last step. Just then, Simone hears more movement from the guest bedroom. He decides to take a look inside. And what happens next is downright chilling. gonna happen oh I saw that did you see it oh yeah for a split second a dark shadow can be seen moving towards Simone as he looks inside the room he freaks out and just makes it, a run for it kind of looks like it has some sort of headdress on for it and with that kind of like the old nun headdresses where it has the the cape with it he decides to stay away from the house for the rest of the night. Over the next seven months, Simone and his grandmother discovered that the strange paranormal activity in her house might be linked to an old scarf that she won at a church raffle. Simone says that with his grandmother's permission, he threw away the scarf and that the strange activity in her house has now completely stopped. Oh, so it was linked to an object. <laughs> Ride of a lifetime. Gustavo Alacares from Mazatlan, Mexico is celebrating his 10th birthday with his family in a small amusement park. After gathering his courage, the young boy goes on a roller coaster for the very first time. Oh, I remember that. I live here in Minnesota, so it's I my first uh, amusement. My first time I went on a roller coaster was. Um, Sorry, I use my key because it gets in further in my ear and I can scratch. But uh, anyways, I, I went to an uh, amusement park called Valley Fair here in Minnesota. And uh, the first time I went on a roller coaster, I went on the oldest roller coaster that's still running today in Valley Fair. And it scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> uh, probably about a decade later, I went on roller coasters again. And I, I love roller coasters. They're fun as hell. But originally, they scared the shit out of me, and I was afraid to go on them ever again. A total of eight people get on the roller coaster, all Gustavo's family. His proud mother sits in the front and records a video of Gustavo's first roller coaster ride. But her camera catches something that Gustavo and his family simply can't explain. Something truly chilling. Huh? What was that? Honey. Hey. Oh, the empty last cart. What's going to happen to the back of it? Oh! I saw that. It's still there. I wonder if it was somebody that probably died at the fair. It's not there now. I think the kid keeps looking back because he sees the figure. Hey. 
Yeah, it's not there anymore. You see, none of Gustavo's family got in the last cart on the roller coaster, and it's empty for most of the ride. But during the second lap, someone or something seems to appear out of thin air. The figure is hardly noticeable at first, but then it seems to transform into a solid person, seemingly wearing all black and sitting all alone. Now, the roller coaster has not stopped a single time to allow for a person to get on or off. So just who or what is this? Now, what makes this capture even creepier is that years ago, two people lost their lives on a larger uh, roller coaster that stood on the same land. Okay. After the tragic accident, that roller coaster was condemned and dismantled. It was replaced by this smaller, safer, family-friendly ride. So could this be the spirit of one of the victims of the older roller coaster accident? Are they doomed to loop this track over and over? Let me that know. Would, what you that did. would really suck if that's what you were doomed to do. No room at the end. Popular Japanese ghost hunter Shiro from the YouTube channel Kuro Shiro Channel is joined by his friend Tei to investigate an abandoned inn in the mountains of Japan. The inn was partially destroyed by a typhoon in 1982. The creepy inn is said to be haunted by the ominous spirit of a woman who is known to linger around room number 208. In an attempt to capture evidence of the paranormal, Shiro decides to leave a static camera recording outside of room 208 while he and his friend explore the rest of the inn. Without them knowing, the camera captures something downright creepy. Oh, I saw that. It's like a white mist. Something can be seen moving behind a decaying old Japanese sliding door. The two investigators have no idea what they just captured, so they decide that Tei should go and stay in room 208. Shiro heads off to explore the basement, so Tei is left completely alone upstairs in room 208. Suddenly something happens that chills him to his core. <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to pop up behind him or something. His camera's not focusing very well. Oh, I saw that. I just saw that. This is just a black figure that popped up behind him. Oh, there's the white mist again. The investigator is touched by something that he can't see, and he just makes a run for it. When looking back at the footage, it's clear that there's a dark shadow that seems to reach out and touch him even though Tay says that he didn't see anyone or anything at the time. Then whatever this is seems to follow Tay, this time appearing as a pale figure caught by the static camera pointed at room 208. When the two investigators finally find each other again, Shiro decides that it's time to grab their equipment and just head home. So did their cameras capture the ghost of the woman who is said to haunt the abandoned inn? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax. You decide. A scare at the Airbnb. Imogene from Alberta, Canada is spending the night at an Airbnb with a friend and her little dog, Rosie. Suddenly, Rosie just starts freaking out at what seems like nothing. Is there a ghost? Is there a ghost? Yeah. yeah. What is this first? 
Where's the ghost? Right there. Where? Where is it? She's staring at her with the dog. Imogene jokes that the dog is barking at a ghost, and her friend is a little freaked out by the dog's creepy crazy orange eye shine in the camera. But then things take a very bizarre turn. What the f Suddenly the little dog makes a run for it, and a creepy dark shadow seems to reach out for her. Emma says that she has no idea just what this strange shadow could be, and she now believes that the Airbnb might actually be haunted after huh. all. That is interesting. Because there doesn't seem to be anything there doesn't seem to be anything there that could create a shadow that moves like that. What the f The ghost of passengers past. This next creepy video was recorded by a bus driver in Santiago, Chile. The bus driver is completely alone in a parked bus, about to start her shift at 8 a.m. in the morning. Chile. But she suddenly realizes that she might not be as alone as she thought. Was that an old man? Corre el tiempo. Hay un pasajero sentado en el asiento que va solo, al lado de la puerta. Lo movemos. That is really weird. It could possibly be a ben of an, uh, ben a security an old camera man. live feed shows a young passenger is seated next to the window. That doesn't look like a young passenger. It looks like an old man behind the bus driver. But when she turns to look, there's no one there. The bus driver wonders if she might be witnessing a real paranormal event. Unfortunately, the video cuts right there, and it was reposted to the internet without a name or source. So was it a ghost? are just a very strange camera glitch. I leave that up to you to decide. Watch closely. Urban explorer Jimmy Jimenez has traveled to an abandoned ghost town somewhere in the mountains of Mexico. He stumbles upon an empty and seemingly barricaded house and decides to take a look inside. While exploring, he doesn't really find anything that's strange, just an abandoned house covered in dust and dirt. I'm guessing Mexico has like a lot of ghost towns and ghost villages. But while his back is turned, something happens that makes you wonder if the house was barricaded for a reason. Something truly chilling. Watch closely. Yeah, normally if something is barricaded or boarded off, the the thing to do is don't touch it. It's more than likely barricaded and boarded off for a reason. So uh, don't. T don't don't touch it or try and open it. Lee. No, that doesn't look too old. Oh, I see the bear is sitting up now. I don't know if he realizes. <laughs> When 
Jimmy enters the old abandoned house, a doll can be seen lying face down on a chair in the corner of the entrance. But when he returns later to the entrance, the doll is now seated upright, facing Jimmy as if watching him. The explorer is completely unaware of what has happened, and he leaves the house oblivious to what he just captured. Now it should be... Hopefully nothing is attached to him now. ...mentioned that this footage has zero cuts. You can watch it yourself on Jimmy's YouTube channel. Except for a stray dog barking in the background and the sound of Jimmy's own movements, no other footsteps or motion can be heard. So it's a complete mystery as to how this doll could have moved. Could it be that something terrible happened in this house? Is the doll perhaps a warning for Jimmy to leave? Let me know what you think. The Late Night Visitor Sandra Crocker from Lincoln, Nebraska wakes up one morning to find a strange notification from her Ring doorbell camera. The notification says that someone was at her door at around 3.30 in the morning. When she checks the footage, she is shocked. Okay, I'm guessing that's her that's left. Something can be seen that seems to exit Sandra's house at 3.24 a.m. The unrecognizable figure appears small and wide at first, but then as it disappears around the corner, it seems to have grown in size and is now dark oh. as night. Some have even suggested that it looks like the dark figure of a woman walking away in an old-timey dress. Now, Sandra doesn't know what to make of the footage. So, what do you think this could be? That is really weird. Let me know. It looks like it's Thanks carrying for something. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. It looked like it was actually carrying a couple of things in its arms. <sighs> well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to know your opinions. If there is anything else you'd like to see me react to, please make sure to either comment them down below or post them over on my uh, Discord. I do have a channel over on Twitch that I stream to every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So please go check me out over there and hang out with me when I stream. Links to all my stuff will be in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.